Mukuro, watch out! I hope this is going to make you their eyes in shock. As for evading the charging Mukuro, she jumped back with the agility of a teenage schoolgirl. And at that instant, Makoto dies instead. Well, Kalos Spirit appears. This appears to spawn a shooting thing. Well, oh, she, she survived? All of a sudden, the girls are wired in this turn event. Wait, wait for it. Spear speed in the count of shot. The blinding speed's mechanism. She avoided it. Mechan instead, installing the floor and walls of the gym. Whoa. Makoto was a number of notes. Two. Nah, he's a casualty. Why did I just call Jinko Mukuro? Mukuro. The name. A sharp pain struck. Intensely pain. A random spine spread through his entire body. Oh no. He. Yep, he gets. He dies instead of Jinko. And Mukuro. A spruce down the side. Towards the stretch and shallow. Back, coating the blood and other bodily fluids. Oh snap. Don't look at his mind. Somebody does. Someone's the lucky student. A silly fate, he's learned some everything. Electric jolt. It jogged his memory. Found by chance. Makoto managed to escape. But only once. But on the worst way possible. Escape this hopeless game where he and his fellow students on the memory stone and are forced to kill each other. That's the amount that led him to his current life with this predicament. In the end, perhaps only escaped from one despair to fall into another. Oh, the irony. His actions are intended to come to him for one person. A girl living a false identity at the sky to the beloved little sister, Jinko Oshima. Mukuro Ikusawa, the ultimate soldier and a member of the ultimate despair. Um, past, future, perhaps even hopes on, on the path of despair. Ouch. So the curtain falls in Makoto's story for now. And this is where the branching path begins. The story is about a certain girl, Mukuro's perspective, or pitiful name when else in the seal of Academy. A new curtain along with new despair shall now rise. <clears throat> This is where Dynamop IF really kicks in. Whoa. Time had stopped for Mukuru Kusaba. It was as if he, everything across her on her had frozen perfectly still. In the past, she was known as the ultimate soldier. She had experienced this feeling before during her time with the mercenary group Fenrir. In situations where she's surrounded by a hopeless number of enemies, Within the jungle or in a desert run. The charging enemies seemed as though they were frozen in time, which allowed her to claim a decisive victory in all their battles. But this wasn't the battlefield, so why did this sensation feel from the, this familiar sensation happen after once again? In order to understand what had happened, Mukuro slowly tried to assess the current situation within the frozen world. Jinko and Mukuro, both children of despair. But Jinko and Oshima, the true ultimate despair, harbors a far deeper darkness within her. Though her last name, the last name of the Mukuro is Jinko's older sister, connected by the bonds of blood. Cooperating with Jinko's hopeless plan and impersonating her under the pretense of participating in the family and Mara's classmates. According to the plan, Mukuro was supposed to oppose Mara Suma. Who was controlling and be locked in a dungeon as punishment. But because she committed violence in from against the headmaster, she would have ended up dead. I said in the other, she would have skipped the dungeon of the same fair assassin and intended to deprive the students of hope. That was the rule she had been assigned originally, however, when Makoto succumbed to the headache, Jinko ordered her to see if the shock had caused him to remember anything that made him a liability. He woke up as if she, she was intended, intending to him, so she made a small talk, but she didn't notice any change in his behavior. Until this point, she was certain there shouldn't be any problems. However, nothing could go wrong, but every plan is subject to fail. She stomped on Monica like her Mr. Order to, and flawlessly spoke the line she said to memorize. Afterwards, she would fall through the trap door in a dungeon, and the ice on the other students. That was her role, she hadn't done anything wrong, but that was actually a double facade. 
there weren't any problems. There was no problems. You know, she repeated them to herself in all her silent prayer. But in that frozen moment in time where she was, where she was, saw was not a trap but a countless spears. Makoto being a casualty instead of Junko or Mukuro. Oh, the irony. Had skewered Makoto through his side. Well, rest in peace, Ultimate Lucky Student Number One. Makoto, where are there spears? Gunyu, I would have died if I hadn't moved. Did Jinko mess up the plan? No, Jinko would never mess up. She calculates every contingency, if not most of them. Was she actually trying to kill me? Me? Makoto saved me. But why? Why did he say my name? Did his memories return? Did I not realize that? Did I make a mistake? Possibly. Is that why Jinko got angry? Is this punishment? Despair? Is it my fault? Jinko tried to kill me. I have a million things running through her head. Slowly time came back to her world. I feel her face turned pale as she looked toward Makoto. The student scream ran to the, to the gym. Saiko was probably the first to scream, wow. But who screamed first didn't matter to Makoto? The Makoto. Makoto knew her identity. He saw through her disguise. Makoto was the ultimate lucky student. He had been her classmate for the past two years, and now he was a sacrifice to despair. Not long ago, he had given her an answer of sorts during that conversation in the nurse's office. Just a pawn in the plan her sister had devised, but now a feeling of doubt began forming in Mukuro's mind. I don't want to Makoto. Heart churned up as she continued to think and return. I promise that if I do decide to kill someone, I won't be you. Was I impersonating Jinko then? Possibly. Or did I really mean that? When did I start feeling this doubt? Just now, the moment he saved me. Or when he spoke in the nurse's office earlier. He spoke me. Or when I first confronted him about this killing you before his memories returned. Or was it before even then? Uh, Mokuro stood there, confused and overwhelmed, as Mokuro slowly opened his eyes, the spirit and pain to his side. Mokuro. Makoto, you okay? Oh no, he's not. With no one impersonating the ultimate fashionista, up from the floor, Makoto asked, "Can I die here? Why are you just so like Jinko?" He was smiling despite the fact that he was impaled. can not feel pain anymore, or maybe he was being affected by something else. But regardless, Makoto ignored the fact that he was dying just to give Jinko Makura his warm smile. I'm glad. I'm glad you're safe, Makoro. As soon as she heard Makoto's weak, fading voice, something inside Makoro snapped. From within the shell of despair, she had built up an intense emotion and flooding. Coming out. Pain. Sadness is all wrong. I not back the emotion any longer. No, no. For the first time, I'm at least a screaming in, into the world. Dang. I fell to her knees and thrust her head. A small shadow started walking toward the back. Uh oh. M Monokuma. Stuffed animal had been under her foot. Oh, he's in Yeah. He was intending to kill Mukuro, but now Makoto took the fall. Claws were extended. He was no longer walking with unusual well. Oh boy, he's gonna kill her. He moved like a beast. Silently stalking his prey. Slowly advanced within this tiger's blind spot. As he inched close to Mukuro, Monica raised his razor sharp claws, crouched on his long arches, and leaped forward to the back of her neck. Just before the claws had reached the paralyzed Mukuro, a dark shadow moved in from the side, spotted with probably one blow. Sakura. Lens deflected. Mukuro, Monica was sent flying through the air, spinning wildly with the crash from the wall. What are you trying to do? Sakura Ogami, Elton Martial Artist, had just presented another tragedy. Thank you, Sakura. Before Monokuma addressed him in a loud, boomy voice. Not only did you attempt to kill Jinko for violating her relations, you even attacked Makoto, who had nothing to do with this. Oh boy, the plan's falling into shambles. If you plan to continue acting in such a manner, savage manner, there is no reason for us to play play along with your game. The Akutayami, open, open after Imperology, smoke comes from the Sakura. Fool. 
One could say you've now violated school rules. Regulation between your senses options. Oh, yep, now she's an accomplice too. As if he honestly didn't care if his fellow students lived or died. I, if only he knew. She merely de defected in that mess of time now, so I don't think it's really time for an act of violence. Like Biafra. It's less seen in phase that she's chilling him over his words. However, if the banter between the two was enough to stir the sun sun's sun action. Makoto! It's like if the first one went to him and kind of slide and laid bleeding from his stomach. But Monica must stop her, shining a ton of voice and seeing coming out of character. Stay right there! Be careful, don't get, don't get too close to those two. Huh? Wait. Is that a loudspeaker? So held by Monica Moe's des desperate tone. And the others stopped moving almost instinctively. The student looked around each other. Instead of usual playful group, Monica Moe walked towards and with deliberate me methodical steps. And then, he suddenly blurted out something that took everyone, including Luke Roll, by saw by surprise. I'm sure you're probably confused by the sudden turn of events. But I want you guys to work together. Wait, they're changing plans? Mokros only turned to yell towards Monica and all of them. Too late for that. He pointed at her and yelled. Mokro Kusab and her accomplice, Makoto Nai, are the terrorists just- Oh, he's rounding them up. Passing the buck. Terrorists responsible for locking you all inside this academy. Wait. They're throwing Makoto under the bus? Mokro, I can understand. Makoto has nothing to do with this. Time stopped for Mokro. The plan has gone horribly awry. And the other one affected. Everyone seemed to be frozen in shock. Sounds of science. Oh, yeah. Asahina. I'll soon to us go first. You're kidding, right? I mean, Makoto is a terrorist? It's impossible. But who's Mukro, anyway? That's Jinko. No, no, no. This being so expanded, Ollie. The real Jinko must be in prison somewhere in this school. Worst case scenario, she might be killed. Mukro must have researched which one of you will be there. Use his word impersonate and hit him on the floor between you and her. Probably trying to make sure the killing game went smoothly. I went to his hands and feet and drinking out with the other people still really stood in the system, so. I am the Shiki Madara, the ultimate hack. Wait. The Shiki Madara? A new character, ultimate hacker. I am your upperclassman. I hacked into the academy from the outside, and I was finally able to take control of one of his bodies so long. Wait, a hacker? So, if he's controlling Monokuma, then where's Junko? The real Junko take control from who and where? Head, head of the terrorist organization that's controlling the world from the outside. Whoa, snap. Plot twist when he's saying Junko. That's not Junko anymore, is it? Head of the Heard the words come from Monokuma's mouth. For a brief moment, she clung to the hope that her sister wasn't trying to kill her, but as soon as hope was born, it was immediately consumed by despair. He had the power to transform hope into despair in an instant. I heard that easily. Something must have gone wrong. I can change to pretend to be someone named the Shiki in order to frame the Korean Makoto. Oh, fake identity. Shinko was using Makoto's survival tactic as a branching path to leave the sins of despair. Another alias. Monokuma continued to talk, telling the students more lives of her transaction. On their first year of the academy, we exposed the sleeping gas, knocked unconscious and taken hostage. Mukuma and Makoto are probably the only operatives that the terrorists sent inside the school. That means they probably didn't know how to escape from here. Well, Mukuro, yes, but I don't know about Makoto. Monica returned to face Mukuro. Mukuro just saw as a member of a mercenary group called Fenrir. I want to come to killed over 10 people since we the school. Don't get soft and think you can capture a lie. In fact, that's exactly what the cops told me. So the moment I saw an opening, I tried hacking this, and hacking the trap they sent tried to kill her. But what about my Makoto? Monica will give a cold emotion to answer side his question, yeah. Why was he a casualty? My guess that I'm using the ultimate lucky student didn't stand a chance to defend, defying a foot like Fenrir. Probably threatened and forced to cooperate before you enter the school. Or judging from his actions earlier. Maybe Mukro seduced him. Nah, that ain't it. My parents heard the answer. Stop talking. Raised her head and shouted. You're wrong. Makoto isn't a terrorist. You'll have to believe me. I'm late for that. Now their doubts setting in. And then, as if he was speaking from it, for everyone there, Taka stepped forward and nervously asked. 
What do you mean, Makoto isn't a terrorist? Not helping. There's no doubt that you, in fact, are a terrorist. Oh. Adding fuel to the fire. I asked that you correct yourself once and say, We are not terrorists. Yeah, big mistake. Oops. Because I said, I don't doubt as well. It is strange. Does, does it not seem odd that she is so protective of someone who was met a few days ago? Makoto stood in silence. Stone's face began to fill with suspicion and doubt as he when he had the real dream for Mishima. Because he was asking a colleague. I have heard that from Mako, whatever his name is. Called you Mukla instead of Junko. How would Makoto know that your name is really Mukla if you just mentioned that to Longo? Awkward. But a friendlier. 